Peace and blessings. Welcome back to Sunday Night Prime. My name is Father Agustino Torres, and I'm here with Father Innocent and Brother Angelus. Now, I'm sure some of you have had an encounter with someone, or maybe within yourself, where you encountered Jesus, where, where it became real, or maybe you know someone who you're praying for that Jesus would become real. Well, we're going to turn right to this clip from Father Benedict, who's going to talk to us exactly about that. In the Christian scriptures, regardless of what their origins may be, and there's endless speculation about this, speculation that if you're honest about it, has a good deal of the theoretical and the disputable about it. I spend part of my life studying these various opinions. Uh, it's my hobby. I have two hobbies. I feed ducks and I read biblical scholars I disagree with. And of course, included in these documents are utterly mysterious events that you and I cannot conceive of in our minds. How they became known to the evangelist who wrote the gospel is mysterious to us. But the truth of these events is the very foundation of the Christian world and of the Christian of Christianity. With Mary in the first chapter of Luke, a little Jewish peasant girl, maybe 14 or 15 years old, a devout Jewish girl looking like all the other Jewish girls for the coming of the Messiah, the promised Savior of the world. And she was in a little town, a hamlet called Nazareth, and she was betrothed or engaged to a man named Joseph, of the house of David. And an angel, now I gotta tell you right off the bat that you don't know what an angel is and I don't know what an angel is. The word means a messenger. Whatever they are, they don't have big white wings, I assure you. They are spirits and messengers of God. And the angel said to her, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And she was greatly troubled by the saying, and thought in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. And Mary then questioned, how can this be? She was a virgin. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and the child to be born will be called holy, the Son of God. If you really do not know Jesus of Nazareth, may I beg you, to take the time someday to read one of the Gospels. You might do well to pick up a student Bible. The New American Bible has got a reasonably short introduction to each of the books. But you don't need a lot of commentary, because what I want you to do is not build up a, a set of theological ideas, but to get a punch in the stomach. A couple of years ago, I was in jail. They finally caught up with me. And I was in jail for saying the rosary in front of an abortion clinic with a bishop who was 84 years old and one of our brothers. So I only got five days and time off for good behavior. And it wasn't nice. But the only thing I had with me was a New Testament. And I was rather impressed that the guard let me keep it nicely. And I thought of the great Russian writer Dostoevsky on his way into Siberia. The only book he had was the New Testament, which someone gave him on the train. And he read it, and he was changed from an atheist and an anarchist to a great believer. And so I took my New Testament, and for the first time in one setting, I read whole Gospels. 
All my life I've been reading the gospel in pieces and, and little swishes and swashes and reading this pericope and that section and meditating on the Sunday gospel. But this, and I read whole gospels, but not in one setting. And I read the gospel of St. Mark, the same one that Archbishop Bloom read. And I felt like I got punched in the stomach. And then I started to read the others. Mark is the shortest. It's like a stained glass window. Matthew, the publican, the convert, tough, tough. Luke, a Gentile, not a Jew, a gentle, compassionate, merciful approach, very insightful, a man who was a physician of the time. And then John, John filled and laden with mystery. If you've never read the Gospel of John, even if you're not a believer, read it and you will walk in the stars. Read it well and you will walk in the stars. I'd suggest that you pray before you read it because you're going to need it because you're going to walk in the sky. And if you say to me, well, I'm an agnostic, I don't know whether I believe in God, just say to whom it may concern, will you help me read this? There you go, Father Benedict, talking to people who may not have any faith and people whose hearts are filled with faith. Brothers, our encounter with Jesus, sometimes it's, it's, it's uh, you know, you have the background music of angels singing. Sometimes, like Father Benedict said, it's a punch in the gut. Mm -hmm. Brother Angelus, tell us about the, this, this whole phenomenon of the encounter with Jesus. Let me just tell you my experience as a deacon. My experience as a deacon reading <clears throat> the Word of God, mm -hmm. proclaiming the Gospel at Mass. Um, I do, just like everyone else, kind of experience, kind of like, yeah, we, we go to Mass every day, we hear the Gospel, we read the Word of God, I make time for it in my life, and we're going to talk about that in a second, but I have experienced a real grace and the Word of God really being made flesh. And when I get a blessing from the priest and I go over and read the Gospel, I haven't read, like the first time I experienced reading the gospel as a deacon, I've never read it, like that, read it like that before. And so I don't know how to explain it, but something happened. And the word of God being proclaimed, especially in the liturgy, especially at mass, is that word of God that we can open in our Bibles. And it's the word, it's, it's God being made flesh. And in the word and in the person of Jesus, I, it, it's changed my way of experiencing what, what Jesus does. And the church gives us a word every day. That's brothers every day. Jesus, how are you going to speak, speak today to me in this word? Not any word, not any other words, not my own reading plan. Well, I'm just going to do this and do that. The wisdom of the church and the gospel of the day, the gospel of the liturgy, Lord. And my question and the encouragement for everyone to start asking this question, Jesus, how are you going to speak to me today in this word? It's beautiful. And proclaiming that, I feel, I start feeling it, you know? Brother Angelus, I have a question. Please. So, um, so people go to Mass, mm -hmm. but oftentimes, you know, we kind of, honestly, we just show up. Can you give us, like, a suggestion, sure. like a little plan? How, like, you, you're saying that the Gospel has changed mm -hmm. the way, you, specifically, yeah. the way you enter into Mass. Sure. Give us a plan. Give us a little, break it down. Give us a word of how we can go into Mass. Simply put, we need a little space in our hearts, and we need a little space in our minds to, to receive what we encounter at Mass. And so my encouragement for everyone would, would be to shut off uh, our phones, to shut off the radio, maybe on the way to Mass, and to be really, really intentional about creating space in my life before I enter into the church. Because really what we have is we have a lot of busyness. Mm. We have a lot of uh, noise. That's a better word. We have a lot of noise going on in our hearts. And we typically have mass planned out, especially most people on Sunday, but maybe people try to go numerous times a week or, or daily. You know when you're going. And so we have to minimize the noise and allow the Lord to kind of to be able to break in a little bit. And sometimes, it's, and we, we often do this, is sometimes to not have that be the first time you heard it when you get to Mass is a good thing. So maybe create some space earlier in the day or earlier in the week uh, to say, hey, this is the gospel of this week. This is the word, the word made flesh this week that God has given me. Maybe I'll, I'll read a little bit every day and then it's not such a mystery or such, such a surprise when I get there. But we have to create some space for the Lord and create some silence for the Lord. And there's a lot of noise out there. And so we got to take a bit of a step back. Baby steps, of course. 
a little bit here and there, but I really, really believe that'll be fruitful if there's some space that we can be made before we enter and hear the gospel. And I, and I think there's so many things out there that people can use. There's like the gospel on audio. I know the USCCB <clears throat> website, the, the, the website of the bishops of the United States, they have the gospel, the readings of the day in audio. So like, if, if you're gonna be connected, at least be connected <laughs> to, to, that, to, way. to the, that way. <laughs> that way, that uh, way. But Father Innocent, Father Benedict was talking to us about this encounter with God and, and talking about mysterious events, uh, angels and things that we can't really comprehend. So how do we comprehend? How do we approach this? And w is it as simple as reading the gospel? I mean, it's a great question because we're talking about mystery. Father Benedict loved mm -hmm. to talk about mystery, right? He, um, he, had, he had this voice and he had this look in his eye when he talked about mystery. And, and it's just good for us to be humbled as we approach the mystery of God, the mystery of Jesus revealed in the scriptures, the reality that I'm gonna open this, this book and that the church tells me, and I believe that this book is, that the word is living. I mean, mm. to be humbled before that reality, <laughs> like this is not a novel. Mm. This is something, the word of God that's alive. So to be humbled as I take a step and I open the scripture and, and it just makes me, fathers, brothers, <laughs> it makes me think about my own experience that in front of the mystery, in front of the reality that I had, a, I, I believe that somehow this was the word of God. I did receive that kind of punch in the gut that Father B Benedict is talking about where like something happened and moved my heart. And, and it was the first time as a young man, I was in college and I was struggling. And um, I was kind of in a difficult place, some anxiety and depression in my life. And, and I, for the first time I read the, um, the, the, the story of the Good Samaritan. And I had felt like this, this moment, this, this space opened up for me where I, I felt like the guy, on the, 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 the guy beat up on the side of the road. Mm. And I felt alone and it was dark. And, and I just, my, my body and my soul hurt. And I remember reading that story and longing for someone to come find me, longing for someone to come, to come reach into my life and to heal me. And all I can say, when I read that the Good Samaritan, when, and we know the Good Samaritan is Jesus, the one who was sent, the one who was sent to save. We, I felt Jesus walk up to me. And it, the word that's used in the gospel is that it's like Jesus, the Good Samaritan scoops the person up mm. and holds them to himself and takes them to the end. And, and I just felt that experience come alive in my life. That, that was my punch in the gut. That was my awakening that this word of God was alive, but it was alive for me. Mm. And that, that day changed the way that I encountered the word of God, mm. that I was humbled that he wanted, that God would want to speak to me. And Jesus came and scooped me up and he became the word that spoke into my darkness. And brothers and sisters, we, God wants to do that for all of us. In the face of the longing, he wants the scriptures to come alive. Mm. Wow. Yeah. We have like reverence before that. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's powerful. No, and, and so many of us have had those 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 moments, but I, I don't think we talk about them enough. And I think these are these are experiences mm. that need to be shared. I just shared mine on national TV. <laughs> sure, you guys should go. we got this. Right? Well, I'm I'm good. I'm good. No, yeah. 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 <laughs> it was vulnerable. I mean, oh. Look at the vulnerability. We felt that. Yeah, you felt it. Was, it was well you, felt. Put it with you. <laughs> We're with you. No, we are. But you, you opening up your heart to something that you were going through is, is how God speaks those words that are written down. That's how those things come to life because the word of God is alive today. And, and it's going to continue on. And uh, brother, I know you have some stories. Uh, let me tell you what. I got some stories <laughs> of how the word has come alive. Yeah. The Lord wants the word to come alive. The Lord can we say this, uh, is longing for the word to come alive yeah. in us. Yeah. And here's the thing, the word is longing to come alive in the hearts of people who are going through darkness. Yeah. The people who are, who are, you know, in depression, maybe even thinking of suicide and, and, and the word of God has something to say to them. Yeah. Well, I, I got something for you guys, but before we do that, <laughs> We're going to take a quick break, and I can't wait to share with you a story of how the Word of God came to life in a young man. But after this quick break, 
Please uh, stay with us. We are here with you on Sunday Night Prime. Be right back. Peace and blessings. Welcome back to Sunday Night Prime. We're talking about encountering Christ. Father Benedict just really, he said, sometimes it's a punch in the, the gut. gut. Sometimes it's, it's uh, in, you're in circumstances, like he mentioned, he's in prison, and it was the first time he read the gospel in one sitting. Well, sometimes the Lord speaks straight through uh, the television, EWTN. I was in California. And my sister lives in California, up in the Bay Area, and uh, I, was, I was there for an, an event on Saturday, and so I asked, hey, maybe I can go to your parish to celebrate Mass on, on Sunday. And sure, and we got the, all the paperwork, everything, everything done. Well, I, I show up, the, the priest asked me, well, which Mass do you want? Do you want the 10 o'clock? you want the 12 o'clock? I said, whichever one, Father. He said, no, take the 10. No, take the 12. No, take the 10. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and beautiful mass in, in the inner city of Richmond, California. Just our cup of tea, guys. Just yeah, this totally, is what, totally. sort of what we like. <laughs> and, and afterwards, after the mass, I go back into the sacristy, and I'm taking the vestments off, and this, this woman, older woman, comes in and says, Father, can I talk to you? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Mm -hmm. She looks at me, and she says, can, can I give you a hug? Yeah, sure. I'm a hugger. Hey. <laughs> and, and then she says, I can't believe you're here. I'm like, what? What do, what do you mean? So she tells me the story. Her son was going through a deep depression. Mm. For months, it was getting worse and worse until he just locked himself up in his room and it really wouldn't come out. She asked everyone to pray. She asked priests to go over. She asked the prayer groups to pray. And it was, it was, it was, she felt so powerless, she was telling me. And then she sees a show on EWTN where this poor sinner came out on. And this young man was so transfixed. He was like, what, what, what is that? Well, what is he talking about? Mom, mom, what is, what, what's confession? Well, well, what's the Bible? Tell me. And so he kind of like went um, all in looking for a priest, coming to the parish and asking questions. And, and he came into faith. Uh, he came in in the moment of darkness. And then kind of tragically, a couple weeks later, he got in an accident and, and actually died. Oh. And so this woman is looking at me, telling me this story. I'm shocked. And she said, today is his six month anniversary and you're here mm. in my church. And I said, lady, this is God telling you that your son is gonna be okay. Mm. She began to cry and weep and I gave her another hug <laughs> uh, because sometimes God speaks to you in the moment that you don't even realize. Father Benedict mentions Dostoevsky, and I bet you he felt really bad when he was being shipped off to the gulag, uh, to, to, to a prison camp. He was eventually freed and wrote some of the most beautiful literature of transformation. Uh, Brother Angelus, uh, how can encountering Christ, and what in your experience has been this transformative, maybe not punch in the gut, but definitely yeah. change of mind into Christ? You know, in my own personal experience, especially when I was a man in college and, and thinking about life and, and trying to figure a lot out, trying to think about the future, I was really into um, politics and really into communication and really into, um, yeah, just really what was going on in the world and what a recipe was right for for, for life and encouraging people and trying to trying to give people good advice. And so I was really, really into the self-help section at Barnes and Noble or on Amazon, <laughs> right? I was really, really into all the new leadership books and, and everybody trying to, trying to give their, their advice on, on getting it right. And if you just do this, here's the perfect recipe, strategic plan. And so I was really into that stuff in college and I filled my life and I went to mass every day in college and I, and I prayed and I, and you know, I, I did my thing but I filled my stuff, my life with a lot of other words. Mm. And I was really honestly looking for answers there. And I wanted like the most perfect way forward based on all these, this huge section 
of, of, of advice from, from basically secular authors. Mm. And it took a good friend one day looking at my bookshelf. It took a good friend looking at my bookshelf. And I was going on retreat and I was packing up my books and my Bible was sitting on the desk. And it was the last book I put in. And he was like, called me out and he said, that should be the first book and the only book you take on retreat. And I always felt like, like punched in the gut. Mm -hmm. I had a friend call me out and I literally put the other books back and only took the, the, the Bible on retreat. And my brothers, if we give the Lord that space to speak to us in his word, it really became a new, new moment for me in scripture. What can we expect from the word of God? Do we really expect that God's going to speak to us, especially in the gospels, especially in the words of his son and the stories that we've heard our entire <clears throat> lives, but that if we really go with an open heart, if we really go with an expecting heart, if we really go looking for the advice and looking for that peace, that answer that, we, we, that we're really looking for from a lot of other things and maybe even secular things, that changed for me. And I started to read the word of God, expecting the answer that I was looking for everywhere else. And the Lord showed up. And that's what we're experiencing from all these, these people encountering the word of God. The Lord spoke to me in a powerful way. And to this day, I still have to remind myself, you're reading all sorts of other stuff. And, and it's like going back to like, the Bible's right there on the desk. Just, just go with that. I love this. Okay, so there's people who are, are just heard that. How can we give them some very clear very practical steps on getting into the Word. Now, now, not a lot of people read like it used to be back in the day. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Maybe it's, it's, it's mostly on the phone. Like, what, what, what do you guys recommend? I know we're friars, right? And we're not necessarily immersed in the mm. world, but nonetheless, I think that we have something to, to say, to speak to about people's experience and how they can enter the Word. Tell so me. I'm gonna circle back to some Brother Andrew said earlier. The, the church is, is, is in her wisdom is so beautiful, especially how the Sunday gospel works. Mm -hmm. And so my, my small encouragement for anybody who is watching is to, to read, the sun, read the Sunday gospel starting on Monday mm -hmm. for the next Sunday, right? So we're preparing. And you could read it every day, read it three or four times, and just let it speak to you. So when you go to Sunday, Sunday Mass and you're, all your kids are around you mm -hmm. and you're distracted, your heart's already attuned. You, you know the experience, you know the story. It's just a good idea. And we, we can even talk about Lexio Divina. We can even talk about, you know, just entering that word into a si in a, in a, like a silent space for 10 or 15 minutes. But if you read the, the, the Sunday gospel, at least maybe every day or, or three or four days a week to prepare for Sunday, I think that could go a long way. To add to that, that way he always steals my stuff. <laughs> um, to, to add to that, it's the, to, the silence with the Lord and the Word of God is the foundation, but there's so many tools today, and I would encourage, there's, there's a good podcast out there that, that helps you maybe reflect on it, a good priest, a trusted, uh, obviously someone from EWTN, there could be someone that helps pastor you, in a way, that pastor you through uh, the week with this Word of God. There's tons of stuff out there, apps and things that reflect on the Sunday's gospel. So get some help. And if from someone who's trusted, someone who's simple, and someone who really believes, obviously, that the Word of God can change our lives. So you have the silence and you have the prayer, but you have someone walking with you. Um, I think that would be a great compliment to that. St. Francis himself was transformed when he encountered the Word of God. It changed him. And if it changed him, it changed us too, because mm. we're Franciscans. <laughs> And uh, we are amazed at what God can do in the life of one man. We're amazed at what God can do in the life of, of this man. And we're amazed also what God can do in your life. We know he can do great things. My brothers and sisters, encounter Christ in the living word. He's waiting for you there. If you don't know how to start, just start because the Lord is there. I'm Father Augustino with Father Innocent. And Brother Angelus, we are so grateful to be with you. God bless you. We hope to see you next time. Peace and blessings here from Sunday Night Prime. God bless.